Welcome back to part three of survival analysis in R. Uh, this section is we're really going to dig into the actual survival topic itself. Uh, and hopefully you've gone through one and two. You've, you've located the, the file. You've loaded the data. In the la previous section, we uh, looked at the German breast cancer data to understand it a bit. But section three in the code, starting at line 66, uh, is where we load the survival package. So I'm just going to run that library survival uh, to load that. And we're going to start working with survival. So if you remember, uh, the key um, factor here is that the, the recurrence time is linked to this other piece of information, whether the data was censored or not. So censored means uh, we hit the end of our study and we still didn't have a direct observation of, in this case, there was no recurrence of breast cancer. So we can say that it took at least a certain number of days, whether it's 2,000 days or something like that, uh, for the breast cancer to recur, but it could be a lot longer. We don't know. It, we, it's at least 2,000 and that's different than saying it's you know, we know it recurred at 1800 days. So we have to mark that as sensor data and we have to link it. And we do that with this serve object, S-U-R-V. We create a combined object uh, that takes the recurrence time and links it with the censored flag. Now those uh, two data items, right, they have to be aligned with each other. You have to have the same number of observations. They have to be you know, meaningfully aligned in your data set for this to work. Um, and then when we type the command rec serve, instead of two columns of data, we get something that's in this survival format uh, where a plus indicates censored data. So, right, so if we look at the, um, the head of our data set, we can see the first uh, head command gives us the first six observations. We can see that uh, recurrence time in the first observation was 1,337 days, and it was not censored. The one in this case means not censored. It means it was an actual observation, uh, and so on for the first three observations. But then observations four, five, and six are censored. So someone came into the study relatively late, uh, and they did not have a recurrence for 148 days. Uh, and then the study ended. We didn't observe them after that. So that data censored, and we've got a plus next to it. So this is just, uh, I'm maybe going over this, uh, uh, it may seem like a bit too much, but this is the, it's, it's all in this setup of the data. Everything afterwards is special techniques that are going to make use of this data structure. Uh, so that paired element of the observation time plus the censoring indicator is really what it's all about. Uh, and so we do that with the serve object. We've got this new object called recserve. Um, if we point our standard um, R functions at it, we ask what class of object is that? Well, that's a serve, serve object. It's a survival object. Um, and when we plug that object into our survival related functions, it's going to behave nicely. Okay, so the first thing we, we often do with survival data to understand it is to do a Kaplan Meyer curve. Now that's named after the people who created this technique. Um, you can go and look up you know, how it works exactly, but essentially it is a technique for uh, figuring out the proportion of people who are surviving or, you know, uh, getting a certain condition over time in our in our data set. So we we run this command called serve fit and that fits a survival curve to the data. Uh, we're just we just do the data object uh, tilde one uh, to just do a straight uh, survival curve and let's plot it and take a look at it first. So we've created it and then we can just do plot uh, and I'll run the command uh, from line 83. 
Oops, I keep highlighting those in the wrong way. Um, uh, let me clear this plot out. I just want a fresh plot so that you can see it very clearly. So I'm clearing my graph space, plot it again. And this is what <coughs> a standard Kaplan-Meier curve looks like. So we start at time 0, and at times this is a proportion on the left-hand side. 100% of our subjects have not had the thing happen to them. Now in this case, it's the recurrence of breast cancer. Um, and then as time goes by, uh, people have these recurrences of breast cancer. So we can read this as if we trace up from 500 days, uh, that's about about 90 percent, about 0.9 proportion. Um, 0.9, or let me say 90 percent of the subjects have not had a recurrence of breast cancer at that point. Uh, and then we go down um, about after a thousand days, only about 60 percent are still cancer free on out to 2,500 days where it's about 35 um, percent. So, and then the dotted line is actually a confidence interval because these are estimates of uh, some true underlying relationship. So the confidence interval at a 95 percent confidence interval looks like that. We can, uh, we think that between about 25 and about 50 percent of uh, people will make it to 2,500 days without a recurrence. And, you know, so this is the, you know, the first step we, we start to try to understand what's going on. Uh, there are other methods uh, that are s tiny technical details about how this curve is calculated. Um, if we plot those, we'll, you can actually see the, the curves are, are almost identical. They're really uh, just a tiny, tiny variation. Um, that's not something that you, t you typically need to worry about, but just like many functions in R, uh, that power to really specify very precise methods is there behind the scenes. Okay. Uh, the next thing I want to mention at line 88 is when we, when we talked about the summary statistics, we said uh, you can't just take a median and a mean of this data because uh, because the sensor data is not the same. It, it is not a true number. It's an at least uh, a certain number of days. And so there's a method for dealing that, dealing with that called the restricted mean. And the we can print the restricted mean with a command like this in line 88. It's something that emerges out of the um, sur survival it's the serve fit function, right? So when we create that survival, that fitted survival curve, we also get a restricted mean. Uh, then we can extract it. So here we have 58 events. Those are 58 recurrences of cancer. Fift out of the 100 subjects in our data set, 58 had useful information, and the other 42 are like half useful information. That's the sensor data, that's the at least part. And so we have a uh, restricted mean of 1,544 uh, with a standard error associated with it. It's not just a sort of straightforward number. Um, and we actually can compute a confidence interval based on that as well. So these are all ways of reporting and understanding this survival data, which, as we are starting to see, is different than usual uh, usual observations. Um, going on to uh, number 93, <coughs> when, we, when we looked at the first graph, the survival function, that expresses the proportion of people who survive, who don't get the thing happening to them. Uh, but the hazard function is an expression of how many, it's, it's really just the reverse of that. It's how many people get the condition. So what is the risk of getting the condition? 
And so the risk is after a thousand days, uh, the hazard is about 50%. Um, so we can plot that. Uh, this does look a little bit different uh, than, you know, it's not one minus the survival function, um, but that's just a, a function of the way the hazard works. Hazard is an expression of uh, the ongoing risk from period to period, and so it, it gets expressed a bit differently. Uh, the 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 one minus expression is really the uh, what's in line 96. That's called the cumulative event probability. So this is the uh, proportion of people who have had had the bad outcome or the event happen to them. In this case, the cancer. Uh, and there's also like a log a version of this, which is um, sometimes used, uh, but I won't discuss that any further. Just this is very typical of, of R, is that those other methods that are occasionally referred to are also there. But, you know, uh, most of the time you'll be looking at survival function or uh, really mostly survival function and sometimes cumulative hazard function. Okay, so if we wanted to... Um, dress up our images for a report to compare a couple of things. We can do that by pairing a couple of graphs and giving them nice titles. Um, and so we've, we've really gotten our basic look at the data here. Now the next thing uh, that we're going to do is again try to understand do any of our variables have some kind of impact on survival. And we, when, we, when we did that with just plotting the scatter plots, we saw very little. But if we want to plot uh, something different, uh, we're going to start at, at line 111, and we're going to look at categories, right? So things like has if they've had menopause or not, that's a categorical variable. Have they had hormone treatments or not, that's a categorical variable. Um, we are, we're also going to split the age into a categorical variable, people who are over or below the median age. So 50, we're going to split the subjects 50% that way. And then we're going to plot two plots where <coughs> the subjects who are below the median age are in red in this graph with a zero. Um, let me... Let me just reset this. I'd like to see that a bit larger. Um, that should we should be able to get rid of these and go back to that view. This is. lazy way to do this, but I'm going to do this anyway. Okay, so now, okay, now we have a full screen uh, or full half screen plot of that survival curve. All right, so what, it, what have we done? We have uh, graphed in red the survival curve for younger people, and the younger half of people, and in blue the survival curve for the older half. So here, there's a gap that opens up, right? And the gap is important. So uh, again, to read off one example, at a thousand days, um, almost, I would say, almost 70% of younger patients have survived without a recurrence of breast cancer. But that number drops to about 55% of older patients. So older patients are more likely to have that recurrence. Um, if we look at menopause, now menopause is pr is also d pretty directly associated with age. So uh, we see the same kind of relationship. Zero is younger, or, or zero is not having menopause, one is having menopause. Um, let's look at the hormone treatment. So the hormone treatment is <coughs> Zero is no hormone treatment, and one is having hormone treatment. 
So in this case, the blue line is on top, and that's a good thing, right? So if you have hormone therapy, uh, then your survival uh, without getting a recurrence of breast cancer is uh, much higher, and there's a significant gap that kind of opens up over time uh, in terms of your uh, recurrence. It looks like hormone therapy drops at least 25 percent. Um, it adds a 25 percent chance of um, not having a recurrence of breast cancer. Um, here's another one. Uh, this is the number of progesterone receptors. If you've got more progesterone receptors than the, the median person, you've also got a much better chance, right, of survival. Uh, same is true for estrogen receptors, so although not quite as big of a gap. So, so having those receptors in your body is a good thing. All right, so this is, a, we haven't done anything like a uh, regression analysis or anything with coefficients to estimate anything, but we have visually seen that some of these factors do make a difference. Um, but we, we cannot, as of yet, make a statistical statement about that. We're just sort of observing the patterns visually. Um, and so let me do one other small topic, which is the empirical uh, cumulative distribution function. This is something that is not um, always asked for, but just so we can see it, <coughs> the cumulative distribution function shows the uh, a little bit about these variables, right? So here's menopause. Uh, menopause uh, for people who have had menopause, the distribution is, is on the right, and people who have not had menopause, the distribution is on the left. So, so we can visually see, again, the separation between um, the older patients in the study who've had menopause. Uh, we can see the distribution of the age of people who are above and below the median of, uh, I'm sorry, we haven't gotten to that yet, uh, people who've had hormone therapy or not. So people who've had hormone therapy are uh, actually older in the study. Uh, they are blue here compared to people who have not. Um, we can look at the age of people uh, with different levels of hormone receptors, and it turns out that one is not that closely connected to age. You can see those curves come closer to, together. So the, the point here of this empirical uh, di cumulative distribution function is it is a way to perhaps understand the relationship of one variable to another uh, in this case, we're checking it against age to see uh, if there's further useful information uh, that we can extract. Now, that's not really a major topic, uh, but I'm kind of throwing that in there. Okay, so let's end this segment, and we'll come back with um, further analysis where we actually start to try to fit uh, a, an explanatory curve to our data.